Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a cubic equation. So we're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 3 first. Let's go ahead and do that. It's going to give us 3x minus 3x squared minus 6x cubed equals 1. Great. Now I can just go ahead and put everything on the same side, right? So if I do, it's going to look like this. It's going to look like 6x cubed plus 3x squared minus 3x plus 1 is equal to 0. Then I just need to look for uh, solutions, right? But um, how do I find the solutions? It doesn't seem to be factorable at this point. Or I could use the formula, but we're not going to do any of those. Okay, we're going to do something different. So for that purpose, I'm going to arrange my equation a little differently. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. After I distribute the 3, I'd like to keep 3x minus 3x squared on the left hand side. I'd like to subtract 1 and put the 6x cubed on the other side. Okay, so now we do have a quadratic on the left hand side and a cubic, but that doesn't really help much unless we do the following. Okay, what am I going to do next? I'd like to write this in uh, standard form, so from largest power to smallest. That's going to look like negative 3x squared plus 3x minus 1 is equal to 6x cubed. Now, at this point, you might still be thinking, like, what does this have to do with solving the cubic, right? I mean, on one side, I have a cubic. On the other side, I have a quadratic. So this would be meaningful if you had uh, something cubed on the left-hand side, right? Because you have something cubed on the right-hand side. Uh-huh. That's the key to solving this problem. If only I could do something, so I got to manipulate this equation, right? If only I could do something to make the left-hand side a perfect cube. And there's actually a way to do it. Maybe you've already seen it, right? Okay, at this point, you might have seen it, but that just involves adding x cubed to both sides. But why? Okay, here, you got to remember Pascal's triangle. How do you expand a plus b quantity cubed? It is a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus 1. And if b is negative, of course, you're going to change the sign here and there, so on and so forth. Okay, cool. This looks good. Well, uh, what am I going to do here? Um, so I'm going to make this one look like that. So, But I do have a 3 here, but that's a negative 3, which is fine, because it just means that um, the second term is negative. So in other words, to keep a long story short, uh, this is going to look like x minus 1 cubed if, if I have the following, right? Isn't that equal to x minus 1 quantity cubed? Well, take b equals negative 1. Oops, by the way, I just realized this is supposed to be a b cubed. And I'm like, I've been looking at it like this is not supposed to be 1. Okay, never mind. That's supposed to be b cubed. Now, this makes sense. Okay, cool. So, Basically, I just replace b with negative 1 and a with x, and that's what I got. Well, what does that equation have to do with this equation? Well, they're related because all you have to do is add x cubed to both sides. And if you do, you're going to get something nice. Look at this. Add x cubed to the left-hand side, and then add the same thing to right-hand side, which is going to give you 7x cubed. Now, what do you see? You do see a perfect cube on the left-hand side. Don't you see that? Okay, so that is x minus 1 quantity cubed, which is equal to 7x cubed. Okay, cool. Now, what am I going to do next? Well, I have uh, something cubed on the left-hand side, and I said that on the right-hand side, I have the same thing, or something similar. Well, how do you write it? Well, we can write the 7x cubed as the cube of something, can't we? We can write it as the cube root of 7 multiplied by x quantity cubed. There you go. So I got it. Well, if a cubed equals b cubed, what is that supposed to mean? Well, if a cubed equals b cubed, that implies, always implies a equals b. There's no other way because 3 is an odd number. We can't uh, use negatives, so they both have to have the same sign, so on and so forth. So this implies, this implies that x minus 1 is equal to the cube root of 7 multiplied by x. Great. Now I can solve for x because, you know what, even though we have a radical, this is a linear equation. We can solve it. Come on. Put everything on the uh, left-hand side, like in terms of x, everything that contains x on the left and the number on the right. There you go. Now we can factor out x. That's probably 
you know, one of the easiest ways to solve this problem equals 1. And now we're just going to use basic algebra. Divide both sides by 1 minus cube root of 7. And what is that going to give us? That's going to give us the solution. Okay? All right. Awesome. So we're getting, getting from here x equals 1 over 1 minus cube root of 7. Okay. Now, at this point, you may want to rationalize the denominator. I mean, you don't have to, but let's just go ahead and do it because it's fun. And to rationalize the denominator, we're going to use, we're going to use what? We're going to use the difference of two cubes formula. Uh, how does that work? Well, we wrote the a minus b quantity cube or a plus b, but let's go ahead and talk about this one more time. The difference of two cubes is factorable this way, right? So now I'm going to consider this to be my a minus b. So a equals 1, b equals the cube root of 7, right? So what I need to multiply it by then is going to be a squared plus ab plus b squared. Let's go ahead and form that term. And that's going to be a squared is 1, ab is their product, which is cube root of 7, plus b squared is going to be the cube root of 49 because you're supposed to square the 7. And then top will be the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and just write it down and then Next step, we're going to simplify this expression. Now, notice that when we multiply these two things, we're supposed to get the sum, uh, difference of two cubes. So it should equal, the top, of course, is going to stay the same. Multiply by 1, it's the same thing. All right. And then the bottom one is going to be actually simpler. Why? Because it's going to be 1 cube minus cube root of 7 cube, which is 7. So it's going to be 1 minus 7, which I can write as... 1 minus 7, I guess. Next step, I'm going to simplify it because I have to do two things. So this is going to be negative 6. And then I, what I'm going to do is I don't want to divide by negative 6. It doesn't look good. So I would like to multiply both the top and the bottom by negative 1. So my answer should be, I think, in the simplest form, is 1. Okay, awesome. I hope you enjoyed the video. That's it for today. Please comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you tomorrow with another video. Take care. Bye-bye.